Welcome everyone to the latest Coffee Break webinar by RIB Costex. My name is Francesca Nottingham and I'm a Costex consultant in RIB software. As you can see on screen, this month's topic is using variables in dimension groups. So we'll have a look at how you would use them in the software. For those of you who don't know what Costex is or for those who have never used it, Costex is a fully integrated measuring and estimating solution with universal applications supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, DWGs, all the way through to 3D models, BIM files, and everything in between. As we can see from this matrix, RIB Costex is available in a variety of licenses, ranging from offering all functionality to a fairly limited option depending on your estimating requirements. Delving deeper into each functionality, let's look at the components, breaking down how each of them are cohesive with one another, bringing you an all-in-one service. You have your takeoff options to start with. Whether you're using 3D BIM or 2D drawings, Costex provides accurate data enabling you to utilize this data within your workbook. So our workbooks are just like Excel spreadsheets, but they are our own version. They still have the ability to use formulas and functions, making them very easy to navigate and use. We then have revisions tracking. Now this offers an accurate method of comparing a previous revision with a new one, giving you multiple ways to highlight, identify, and quantify any changes meaning you're always up to date with the latest cost implications. Once you've completed your estimate, you then have the opportunity to produce a report. Now we offer various standard report templates for you to use. Alternatively, you can customise your own report, producing a professional quality output. Don't forget to check out the RIB Costex YouTube channel where we upload our Coffee Break webinars and you can also subscribe so you can get notified of the latest videos and kept up to date with the newest features and how-to videos. So this month's webinar, as previously mentioned, we'll be reviewing using variables in dimension groups. These can be used in both the dimension view and the workbook view within Costex. Firstly, let's discuss what variables are. So something to note here is that there are actually two kinds of variables, one being standard variables and the other are dimension group variables. Standard variables are available to all dimension groups and standard dimension groups in Costex. For example, they can be reused across buildings and projects. While dimension group variables are only available to the dimension groups in which they are defined. The system administration allows you to set up standard variables. So variables act as placeholders for values that might change from dimension to dimension. A variable can be dynamically assigned a value by user input and therefore allows the calculation of quantities to be based on the user's response to the question posed by the variable. When can we use them? We use them mainly in dimension groups within the measured dimensions. They can form part of the formula and allow you to use them in multiple scenarios. Topics we'll be exploring in this webinar are different types of variables. So we have Boolean, number and selection. We will go through what different types are in this demonstration. How to set up variables in a dimension group. And we will also look at using the expression editor tool to build up example formulas around variables. So let's take a look at using variables in dimension groups. So we're going to start with how we access variables and how we manage them. So I'm going to head to my system administration, click on my measurement tab and in here we've got the standard variables tab. Now I have already got one in here, so I've got one for wall types. If I wanted to manage this and change it in any way, I would just select which variable I wanted, press edit, and I've got the option to manage my variables. Now I'm going to show you how you would actually go about inserting a new one. So you just click on insert and this opens up a new window. So this is what we refer to as a standard variable. This means it can be used from project to project and can be accessed by everyone who has permission to view these. I mentioned before about dimension group variables. They are only available in that dimension group. So we will go through and see in detail what I mean by that. So let's see how we would go about creating a standard variable. Now we're going to create one which is based on substructure and we're creating one that asks the question, is formwork required? So that will be the name of my standard variable. Now you have the option to place this into a folder. If you left it blank, it would just place itself into an unclassified folder. So I'm gonna be organized and just pop the folder in of substructure. 
So on type, this is where you would define what type of variable you would like this to be. So let's open up the drop down menu and we can see, as previously mentioned, there are three types of variables. The first one is Boolean, the next is number, and finally we have selection. So Boolean suggests that the variable needs a true or false statement in order to understand what to process. Number is just a number that you can enter and it can be used in whatever formula that you set up, so you don't have to remember it each time. Selection is where you can enter in multiple different options. Okay, so we're going to make this one a Boolean type of variable. You can set the default to either be true or false. I'm going to leave this as true, and then we're going to hit insert. So now you can see we've got our substructure folder, and if I open it, here is my variable. Now we'll close this and what we'll do is we will go to the substructure folder in the dimension groups and find the concrete slab that we can apply this variable to. So I'm going to open up the properties and create a custom quantity. So double click on the dimension group um, and open up a custom quantity. I'm just going to hit insert and we're just going to call it form work. The unit of measure is going to be meters squared. Then when I go to my measure dimensions tab, I can populate this field with the expression editor. So I will hit this button and we're going to start using this space to build our formula. So to start, we'll go to our functions tab and double click the if statement. As you can see, this applies to a Boolean type of variable. Then we can head to our variables tab and we will see the form work one we made. So we'll click on this and select this option. Now, as you can see, we now have the beginning of our formula. So if the variable form work required is true, then after the comma here, we can enter in some dimension fields. So we'll say height times length, and then if it's false, I'll just put zero here to indicate that I want no value, should that be the case. Now we need to actually enter in a height so it knows what value to calculate. So in here, I'm just going to type in 1.3 meters. Now that appears in my height there. Now that we have the formula that references the variable, in our variables tab, we can define our preference on what we want the default to be. So we'll just update this. Now it's asking me if I would like to apply the new height or dimensions, I'll select yes. And as you can see, as I hover over this, uh, I've now got my extra uh, custom quantity there for my form work. So it knows to calculate the height uh, times the length um, to get my area for my form work because I've set it the default as true. It knows to apply that variable. Now what we're going to do or what I'm going to show you is how to create a variable in a dimension group. Um, now this will only be available in this dimension group because we haven't set it up as a standard variable. This won't be available to all dimension groups. So we're going to find a dimension group that will require tiles um, or a wall finish of tiles. So for example, if we go into our um, toilet room here, I'm just going to uh, double click on here so we can enter in some custom quantities. Okay, so from here, we're going to head to our custom quantities and we're just going to insert a new one. And this is just gonna be called tile area. The unit of measure is going to be meters squared. And then what we're gonna do is head to our measured dimensions tab and we've now got this field that we can enter in our formula. So we'll head to the expression editor um, and we're going to head to the variables tab. Now, this is a situation where we're going to actually insert the variable into the dimension group. So this isn't a standard variable. It's not available to um, anyone else. It's not in your system admin. It's literally just 
centric to this dimension group. So I'm going to click on insert. Um, and this is going to be called uh, tile height. And the type is going to be selection. Now I'm going to change the unit of measure to meter squared. And then in my options, I'm going to have an option of a tile height being uh, three quarters high and also half height. Okay, I'm going to set my default to uh, the first one. You can set it to any of these, um, doesn't matter. Um, you can put a hint in and you can also at this point add a standard variable, um, add this dimension group variable to your list of standard variables. Okay, we're not going to do that. Uh, we just want it to be um, for this dimension group only. So I'm going to click on insert. And then we've got our folder here with the tile height and the two options there. You can have as many options as you want to. Um, just for the purpose of this, I'll keep it simple. Um, and now what we can do is build our formula. So I'm going to head to my functions tab and then double click on if. Um, and now we just need to build our formula. So um, we've entered in our if statement uh, and then we are going to add in our variable. So if the tile height equals uh, three quarters height, then it will be wall area times 0.75. We then enter in another if statement. So if the tile height variable equals half height, then we want wall area times 0.5. If neither of those are selected, then we'll just say zero, okay? So because this isn't a number and this is actually to do with text, we do need to alter this variable function slightly. So instead of x var, we need x text var because it's representing um, a phrase rather than a number. Okay, so once you've done that, just click on close and then you've got your formula here. So if um, the variable is, if the variable of tile height is three quarters height, then it's the wall area times 0.75. Alternatively, if the text variable tile height is half height, then wall area times a half. Okay, so now we need to actually enter in our height. So we can uh, untick this and just say 2.4 meters. Okay, just make sure it's selected in there as well. Right, once you're happy with your properties, then you just click on your variables. Now here you can actually decide um, what your um, default's going to be. Um, we put a default when we set up the variable as three quarters, that's why it was already there, but I can change this if I wanted to. I'm gonna leave it as three quarters for now. Um, but you'd have a whole list here if you had various different selections of your variables. Okay, so just click on insert. That's now arrived. We will find the toilet room. So that's this room up here. Now I've got my properties on add tool selected. Now what this is gonna do is when I do my measure, it's gonna give me the opportunity to alter the variable if I want to, um, depending on if I want three quarters height or half height tiles. So I'm just going to click in here. It's now asking me what tile height I want. We'll say three quarters and then update. And now we've got the tile area of 17.04 meters squared. Um, because it worked out the wall area, it knows what the tile area is going to be. And I've adjusted the height. Um, so let's say, for example, um, let's go to another toilet area. So let's say we wanted to measure the women's toilets. We just uh, click on L and capture that area and then this time I'm actually going to say this is only half height so I'll update this and you can see there that it's adjusted accordingly. So that is the selection mode uh, for variables. Um, a number variable works very similarly instead of a phrase it's a number and instead of a selection it just allows you to put a value in um, so you don't have to remember it each time. So that is variables and well standard variables and dimension group variables and how you use them uh, differently and how you manage them. Um, 
thank you for watching i hope you found this useful and um catch us next month for the next coffee break webinar in the series if you like the video then please feel free to hit like and also hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest how-to videos